Hey guys, Joe Pye here. Welcome back to the shop. Thank you to everyone that continues to watch all these threading videos that I've been putting out. The comment string below these videos is actually driving what I'm posting, and today is no exception. One of the comments that I saw and some of the offline messages and emails that I've been receiving says that as the threading dial is coming around, you stand there and you shake and you quiver and you wait for those two lines to line up and then you drive it home and it's a, oh my God, it's, you know, heart palpitations happening. It doesn't have to be. And I'm going to show you why it doesn't have to be. I'm going to take a lot of the stress out and see if you can follow this. I will not be going out to the lathe. There's no reason for it. What you see here, you can do easily on your own. And this should only take a couple minutes. Let's take a look. All right, the threading dial on your machine, chances are it has eight lines on it. Four with numbers and four without. Let's draw that. See if I can do a decent circle for you. All right, not bad. There's one. There's two. Three and four. Now the majority of the machines that I've run, my lathe is a closing, and this is exactly what it looks like. So I hope yours is similar and you can follow along with this. Now if you're if you're running an even thread, the rule of thumb is even thread any line, odd thread any numbered line. So keep that in mind. Now in between the 90 degree incremental numbered lines, you have non-numbered lines at 45 degrees okay here's your dial well, maybe i will go out to the lathe and show you the final application here it might help maybe not these are also engagement points like i said normally for odd threads but there's also an engagement point in between we're going to make them a little bit smaller If you're running a multi-lead thread, which I'm not going to get into because that's way off in left field, you're going to start to utilize these smaller hidden incremental engagement points on this threading dial. All right, I'm going to put my index mark over here. Some ways are up here, down here, wherever. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to put my index mark right here. Now as this dial is coming around, you're standing there and your heart's beating faster and you're waiting for this two to come around or whatever line you're choosing to hit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And right at the last minute, right here, you go boom and you snap that thing in there and whew, all is well. You make your thread, you disengage it, you come back to that and you do it again and you have that same level of anxiety every time. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. All these little green spots are places where the half nut is going to grab a hold of your lead screw. Okay, there's a bunch of them. 16 on my machine. So those are the only spots where that lead screw and half nut will engage as designed. Everything in between will not engage the way it's designed to engage. And that's an important thing to say, because I'm going to cover it in just a second. So all the red zones, technically, are safe zones. The lead screw and half nut will not engage in these areas. So let's say this dial is turning clockwise, and that too is coming around, coming around, coming around, you can actually take your threading lever and put a gentle pressure on that threading lever as soon as this position passes that line and you can drag that half nut for this entire region until it chops in on the number or line that you've selected. Now bear in mind that the half nut is a clamp with a tremendous amount of mechanical advantage 
And if you come down with your threading lever, the half nut will grab the outside of the lead screw, not the thread. It'll grab the outside and the carriage is going to jump, move, shift, start moving, whatever. But your chances are you're going to blow your thread. So running a thread is not about meticulous split second precision timing and it's not about a gorilla grip. It's a lot about finesse. You feel your machine, keep your lead screws clean, keep the knobs all nice and oiled so that they're nice and free. And if they're not, find out why. Shoot some rust buster in it or, or croil or whatever. Loosen them up and finesse that knob in as the threading dial comes around with the point of engagement. Those red zones are safe zones. They should be green and these should be the red ones. So as your number's coming around, whatever you're looking for on either side, know where this zone is and that's where you can drop the nut. It's not going to grab, but it will make contact. So when you drop it, drop it with just enough so that you can feel it. And when the groove comes around, when the number lines up, it'll drop in stress-free. Let's take a walk out to the machine, check that out. The first thing that I would like to point out is that you don't need to use the factory reference mark that's present on your thread dial block. If it's not positioned in a place where you're comfortable with it, put another mark on your block. It doesn't matter. I'm going to engage this block. So I know I have the correct clocking for this. But I'm going to put my own mark out here. Now I'm going to mark up the dial for all the points of engagement. Let's just assume the factory marks are correct. Solid assumption, right? And the GoPro camera is in my way, so forgive the awkward nature of this. Alright, now my machine is turned off. I am going to show you the in-between lines. As it turns, I'm going to keep a little bit of pressure on my handle and watch. Boom, there it is. There's another one. So we're going to do this. We're going to put some shorter lines in there. And I'm going to walk right out of camera range here for a second. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating your safe zone for you, or I'm defining a safe zone. All right, we've got our we've got our pizza made. Let's put the numbers back on the dial. I'll do that in black. One, two. Four. Now the ones that are intentionally in between, I'm just going to mark those with dots. Now there's your eight threading positions. One, two, three, four, and the 45 degree incrementals in between. All of the little wedges, all of the little gaps that you can see, are good zones where you can bring your half nut down and make contact with the lead screw in anticipation of the engagement point coming around. Now if that sounded like Greek, 
I'm going to demonstrate it right here. Let's say we're looking for the two to come around. As soon as this half mark passes, it is okay right now to put a little bit of downward pressure on your handle and just maintain that pressure. As the two comes around, it's going to fall in. Same thing with this one. Anywhere in between those marks is a good place. Doesn't matter which way you're going either. So we're going to look for the two again. We're going to wait for this last opportunity of engagement to pass. We're going to put a gentle pressure on the lever. Maintain it. Don't crush it. Don't try to break the handle off. Maintain the pressure. As it comes around, it will fall in naturally. It doesn't get much easier than that, guys. Try it out. All right, let's do a speed demonstration. I'm going to crank up the RPMs. This is an 8-pitch thread, so this lead screw is going to go kind of quick. And we're just going to see how convenient this can be in catching up with an 8-pitch thread at a higher RPM. I'm going to start off at 98 RPM. And I'm running the machine in reverse just so that the carriage moves away from the chuck for this demonstration. I don't have to worry about crashing my machine into the chuck. Gentle pressure, it's in. I'm going to wait for the numbered lines. Gentle pressure, it's in. You don't have to be lightning fast to do this. Gentle pressure, and you're in. All right, that was too easy. 175 RPM. You're in. Gentle pressure, you're in. Wait for that red line to pass. Gentle pressure, you're in. This is just the best way to do this. That's 175 RPM. Let's jack it up to 320. All right, if you've ever run a thread and you're looking at a dial doing this, chances are you're getting a little bit nervous and you think, this is a really narrow window of opportunity to hit that line. Well, if you put your gentle pressure in these green zones, it's gonna fall in all by itself. Let's go back for the numbered lines one more time. I'm gonna hit the two coming around. Pressure in. Hit the four. Pressure in. Guys, I could sit here and do this all day, but you set your machine for the RPM that you're comfortable with, but when you have this amount of room that you can hit your LUT before it drops in, it's going to take a lot of stress out of your life. Good luck. All right, well, sometimes some of the things that we do so intuitively in a process that we've done a million times or the things that we skip over and sometimes the hardest to communicate to someone who's learning. This is a really good trick. And I'd be surprised if there's any guy out there that's a, that's a tradesman that waits for that line to come around and hits it without a momentary drag in that safe zone before the nut drops in. Check it out, try it out, mark up your dials, get your Sharpie markers out, have a good time, clean everything up so that you know that the half nut is clean, that the lead screw is clean, and Slow the RPM down. If the dial's coming around too fast, slow the RPM down. It'll slow the dial down. Simple. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Hope it helps. Joe Pizinski, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.